Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem two from Leak Code Contest 99 entitled Groups of Special Equivalent Strings. The problem states you are given an array A of strings. Two strings S and T are special equivalent if after any number of moves S is equal to T. A move consists of choosing two indices I and J with I modulus 2 being equal to J modulus 2 and swapping the characters at SI and SJ. Now, a group of special equivalent strings from A is a non-empty subset S of A such that any string not in S is not special equivalent with any string in S. Return the number of groups of special equivalent strings from A. And note that the length of our array is going to be between 1 and 1,000. The length of each of our strings is going to be between 1 and 20. And all of AI have the same length, and all of the characters in each of the AIs will be lowercase. So let's take a look at one of the examples that Leak Code provided us with. So in this example, we are given six strings to start with. And basically, this question is asking us if we're able to swap uh, characters at even indices and we're allowed to swap uh, characters at odd indices with each other, um, what are the unique strings we could end up with and we have to count those number of unique strings so the trick to this problem is to think about your string as really two strings one that consists of the characters at the even indices and one of that consists of the characters at the odd indices and if we construct a table uh, that has each of our six strings here uh, the first thing we want to do is get those two sort of substrings. So uh, we create two columns here, one for even indices, so that's at 0 and 2, and then one for odd indices, which is just the middle character. And then there's a trick you need to know, and that's basically how to tell if one string is a permutation of another string. And the easiest way to check this is to sort both strings and then just see if they're equal. And the reason this works is because a string uh, that is a permutation of another string has to have the same characters in it. And so when you sort it, regardless of what orientation or you know order those characters were to begin with, they're going to end up in increasing order. And because they're uh, exactly the same, the sorted strings should be equal to each other. So if we sort both of these substrings, and then add them back together to get a single string and then compare those strings, we should be able to tell how many unique resulting strings we have. So uh, sorting these is gonna be pretty simple. Um, obviously for our B column, we're not gonna need to do anything, it's just sorted already. Uh, but for our column A, we're gonna sort this and uh, the three at the bottom are gonna end up being reversed. So we'll end up with uh, AC, AB, BC, AB, BC, and AC, and then when we add these back together, we get the following string. So this is our starting string on the left and our resulting string on the right, and we can see if we compare all these that we have three unique strings. Um, so that's how to solve this problem. The way we're going to do this is by just storing these strings in an unordered set or a hash set. And uh, that means whenever you insert a string that already exists, it's not going to insert it. So uh, sets a good way to keep track of the unique number of resulting strings we have. And then all we have to deal with is creating sort of our temporary strings and sorting them. So that's all there is to this problem. Let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. You can see here we have a function that takes a vector of strings A and it returns an integer, the number of unique resulting strings. We declare our hash set at the top here and then we have a range-based for loop where we're looping through each of the words in our vector A. Then we declare two local strings odd and even to keep track of the indices in each of our odd or even indices. And then we have a for loop where we loop through each of the indices in our word and if it's even and we can check this by just doing i modulus 2 we add the character to our even string else add it to our, our odd string and then in c plus we have a generic algorithm sort that can apply to strings as well so we just sort both our even and odd string and then insert it into our hash set and once we finish uh, this nested for loop we can just return the size of our set
and that's all there is to it. So taking a look at the Java code, very similar. Unfortunately, there's no uh, sort algorithm that applies to strings, let alone a generic sort algorithm at, like in C++. So we have to write our own, but it's only three lines. We just uh, take our string, convert it to a character array, array which they have a sort method for, and then we just uh, convert it back to a string. And basically everything else looks the exact same. So we declare our hash set. We have an enhanced for loop, which is the equivalent of a range based in Java. We declare our two uh, strings. We have to initialize them to be empty. They don't have default initialization. And uh, then we have the same uh, for loop where we add um, the characters to the even string or the odd string based on whether or not the index is even or odd. Unfortunately, we can't use bracket operators here. We need to use the car at method for the string class. And then we call our sort string on both odd and even. And then we do a call a call of our add method into our hash set. And at the end, we just return uh, the size of this set once again. Moving on to the Python solution, the most concise of all, as usual, we declare our set at the top, and then we enter a for loop where we can automatically construct our two substrings by uh, using this nice syntax here that basically means starting at the uh, index zero and then skipping by two and uh, starting at index one and skipping by two. Then we can sort this and then we can use the join method which will uh, concatenate each of the elements in our data structure and in between them uh, put whatever is in this character or string. So because it's empty, we're just going to end up turning what was an array based on the sorted method, and uh, it's going to end up being a string. So once we've done that, we just can add them to our set and then return the length of this. And uh, the time complexity of this problem is going to be uh, the number of strings that we have, which we'll call t, times uh, the complexity of our sort, which is going to be n log n, where n is the length of our string. So in total, it's big O of t times n log n. And there is one bonus solution today, as usual, uh, or similar to the last couple videos. I have a bash solution. So once again, I'm a bash noob. Uh, so, you know, don't go and judge this as really good bash code, uh, but just as sort of a learning exercise and how to uh, write things in bash. So at the top here, we have a sort characters function. I called it sort characters instead of sort string because it's technically taking in an argument that doesn't necessarily have to be a string. And so it's basically uh, echoing the argument and then outputting each of the characters on a new line, sorting them, and then deleting the new lines from uh, the result there, which is going to get you the string or argument with its uh, characters in sorted order. And then this function here just gets you the length of a string or an argument. Um, we're basically doing word count uh, with the parameter or the per, yeah, parameter C, which means count the characters, not the lines, and then doing a minus one because it's going to include the uh, end of line backslash N as a character. So then we read in N. I had to add this because leak code doesn't actually support bash. So I was testing this in just a bash editor or bash terminal. And then we declare our answer to be zero. Then we're going to loop through the number of strings that we have, read in each of these get the length of our string, initialize our two sort of substrings, odd and even, which we're calling x and y here. Then we're looping through uh, each of the indices in our string. And then if it's equal, if it's an even one, uh, we're going to add it to the back of x. And if it's odd, we're going to add it to the back of y. Then once we have these two substrings, we sort them with our sort characters function. And then here it gets a little bit messy because there's no uh, set data structure in bash. Um, and so we have to basically loop through and store each of the strings in an array and check to see each time when we want to add one if there's already one that exists. So the time complexity for this is going to be more than t n log n would be t n squared. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.